given two arrays, write a function to return the intersection of their elements. The result can be in any order, but each element in the array should appear as many times as it shows in both arrays. How would you do that? That's about today's video. Let's get into it. Hi everyone, this is Steve here. Today we're going through the follow-up question of intersection of two arrays 1, which is intersection of two arrays 2 arrays 2. Let's take a look at why it's what what changed. Given two arrays, I write a function to compute their intersection. This is the given two arrays, 1, 2, 2, 1, and 2, 2. This time it's returning 2, 2. So let's take a look at the node. So each element in the array should appear as many times as it shows in both arrays. That's why it's returning two twos here, because there are two twos in the first array, two twos in the second array. That's why it's returning two twos, right? And then let's take a look at the second example. 495. Every element is distinct. Um, the second array is 94984. However, 9 and 4 appear twice in the second array. 9 and 4 appear only once in the first array. That's why the output is only 4 and 9. Each appears only once. The result can be in any order. All right. How can we tackle this problem? The multiple solutions. First one, and then we'll go through the follow-up. Um, first solution, very straightforward, we can just use a hash map. How do we build the hash map? The hash map is, of course, is going, the key is going to be the element in this array. And the value is going to be the frequency, how many times that this element has appeared in this array. And then we can go through the second. We, after, we build, after we go through the first array, we have built the hash map, and we, then we use the hash map to traverse through the second array see how many times that this element has appeared in the second app in the second array then we can just add that into a list and then return that list as an array that's the first um, algorithm that's the first solution to this problem let's take a oh no, another thing is that um, it there is one follow-up here which we're just going to take consideration of this follow-up what if num's size is small compared to num's two size which algorithm is better so for that, what we're going to do is basically the extra memory, the time, the space complexity that we're going to consume. What we want to do is we want to swap nums1 and nums2 if nums1's size is bigger than nums2, so that the hash map size we built is always guaranteed to be smaller. That's the idea. All right, let's do that first. Solution one. First, we check. We always make sure that nums1 is smaller so that we build the hash map on top of nums1 so that the hash map size could be as small as possible. Then is greater than nums2. What we'll do is that we'll just swap this. We'll just return this nums2 and nums1. Nums1. So that we always, as I said, we always make sure that nums1 is a shorter array. All right, with that said, let's initialize a hash map. map new hash map. Now we'll go through the shorter array. Nums1, put everything, we calculate its frequency. Num map get all default. We get its frequency, and after that, what we'll do is we'll initialize a list because we don't know how many over intersected overlapped elements there are. So we use a dynamically changed size collection, which is an array list. We'll call it intersect. We'll just call it list instead. Easier to type. And then we'll go through the second array, nums two will get the possible it, it there are two possible cases whether this element that we are reading from the second array it doesn't it doesn't exist as a key in the hash map that's fine or it does exist and we'll check its frequency so map could get a none so we'll default we'll just call it zero only when count is greater than zero what we'll do is that we can add this number 
into the list. And also we need to decrement the frequency count minus one into this. At this point, after we go through all of these, then we have at this moment, after we go through this for loop, then we know all of the distinct, all of the overlapped, all of the intersected elements in both arrays in the times, how many times that each element has appeared in both arrays should be added into this list. Now we can form the final result, new int list size. Just go through that list of another variable called uh, i result i plus plus none that's the final result that we can return this is the algorithm now let's hit submit and see hmm. it's not accepted that is because output is two my output is two that's interesting let's take a look from the beginning we check the length and we construct the map we get oh i'm missing this one here that's what, where we need to um, increment by one so that we always know the frequency of every single element in the first array. And then we initialize a list. We can we try to find the frequency if it exists in the second array. Then we add into the list. We decrement the count and then we assign into the final result. I believe that's going to work. Let's see. Hmm. Still wrong. Hmm, it's still wrong. Let's take a further look. Oh, I think this is really silly. This should be none. We try to get the none. That that is the key. Then default value is should be zero. Here. Okay. And then plus one. Alright. Let's submit again. Alright, finally. Accepted. Now let's talk about the time complexity. Time complexity is going to be O M plus N. M stands for the length of the first array and stands for the length of the second array because anyway, we need to go through each of the two arrays one, once at least. That's the time complexity. Only once actually. The space complexity is going to be the minimum of M or N because remember here, we did the swap. Just in case, if the length of the first array is greater than the second array, we just swap it so that we always build the hash map on top of the shorter array so that the space complexity is going to be the minimum of the two lengths. That's the time and space complexity. All right, now let's talk about the second solution. The second solution is that we can use a sorting algorithm. First, we can solve these two arrays. Then think about the one of the solutions that we come up with to tackle the first problem, the first problem the first version of the intersection of two arrays which doesn't include us which doesn't require us to put all of the duplicate elements into the final result that is to use two pointers right we use one pointer to go through the first solid array and use a second pointer to go through the second solid array we can apply the same technique here okay let's put that into actual code send this to default then first we'll sort both arrays this is going to be the most time consuming part. That's the upper bound of this algorithm. We'll talk about that after we finish the code. Then we'll have two pointers to go through this. This is very similar or exactly the same, this part of the code to one of the solutions to the first problem. And J is smaller than nums two length. What we'll do is we'll just keep checking none equals to this is the happy case what we can do is we'll initialize another list because there could be duplicates otherwise we use a hash set new hash set we we'll just add this one into this list first and then i plus plus j plus plus in this case, we encounter a duplicate, uh, an overlapped element. We'll just move both pointers towards the right. Otherwise, else if nums i is smaller than nums 2j, that means the 
the pointer, the element pointed by the first pointer is smaller. So in order to find possibly duplicate elements, we need to move the first pointer towards the right. So I plus plus else the second pointer needs to move towards the right. That's it. And then after this, we know if either one of the two pointers reached the end of the array, that means we have exhausted possible, possibly intersected elements. So we can just break out. Then we'll have another final result. Since we know the size of the array now, it's going to be the size of the list. Then we'll just put everything there. Have another variable to go through this. Int num in list. Just to put everything there. K plus plus. Put num here. Return result. That's it. That's the uh, second solution. We basically use the sorting technique and then use the two pointer. Now let's hit submit and see. Hmm. Oh, not hash set. What am I thinking? Completely wrong. Array list. So silly. Submit. Yeah, exactly. Ooh, slightly faster. Oh no, no big difference. Um, now let's talk about the time complexity and space complexity. Time complexity of this algorithm is going to be m log m plus n log n. That is m again stands for the length of the first array and stands for the length of the second array. As I mentioned uh, previously, this is the upper bound of this entire algorithm because it takes the most of the time is to be is going to be spent on um, sorting these two arrays. That's the time complexity. For these, this is just a trivial compared with the sorting algorithm. And this one we can ignore as well compared with the sorting, the time complexity that we need for the arrays sorting algorithm. Now let's take a look at the space complexity. Space complexity is going to be 01, right? Because we'll just assume that the sorting either use the default quick sort or merge sort or whatever that we don't worry about. We just ignore that the space consumption on the sorting algorithm and the space needed for the final output it's because it's not really related to the algorithm itself it's going to be 01 we don't need any extra space we just basically we need two pointers to keep moving towards the right that's it for the second solution now let's take a look at the follow-up questions there are, there are three of them first what if the given array is already sorted how would you optimize your algorithm okay then we'll just go directly to the second solution which is we use the sorting algorithm. In that case, we're just comment out these two lines. That's it, because the two given arrays are already sorted. That's the most time consuming part. We'll just get rid of that. Then we can simply apply the two pointer technique. That's, that's going to be the most optimal solution to this given setup. All right, then let's take a look at, take a look at the second follow up question. What if the num's i's size is small compared to num's 2's size? Now let's take a look at our first, first um, solution, which is to use the hash map. Let's take a look at here. The follow-up question is asking us, what if the, the size of the first array is small compared with the second array? So what we do here, we have taken that into consideration already. That is, if the first array's length is greater than the second array, what we'll do is we'll just swap it, right? So that we can make sure that every time we build the hash map, it's guaranteed to be as small as possible. We build on top of the smaller set. So apparently, this algorithm is going to be better. Okay, now let's take a, take a look at the last follow-up question, which is, what if the elements of nums2 are stored on disk and the memory is limited? such that you cannot load all elements into the memory at once. In this case, what we can do is that we can first load all of the elements in nums1 into memory and still use this algorithm, build up the hash map for the key for every single distinct element in this nums1 and the frequency of that element. So we build up this hash map. And instead of continue to use this algorithm, since we cannot load every single element of nums2 into memory from disk because it's too huge, what we can do is that we can break this nums2 into as many chunks, smaller chunks as possible so that every single chunk that we broke nums2 into can be loaded into memory. 
and then we'll just load every single small chunks into memory and continue to use this algorithm, right? Continue to use the first solution so that we can find all of the overlapped elements until we have looped through all of the thing, all of the smaller chunks that NUMS2 has been broken into. This is the solution to the follow-up question. I hope that all makes sense. If that does, please do me a favor and just to destroy the like button, please. I'm going to appreciate it a lot and subscribe to my channel so that each time when I publish a new video, you can get it immediately. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Um, I'll see you guys in the next one.